Welcome to the 33rd episode of Skyrim Cut Content. After the great reception of the previous episode, I thought, hey, why not tackle this other topic which I've always found interesting. This would be The Missing Apprentices. A piece of cut content that's not only very weird, but also very layered. So let's dive in, shall we? The Missing Apprentices is the name of a removed quest that was meant to start out of the College of Winterhold. And for those that don't know, the College is the game's faction with the most content cut hands down. No other faction even comes close, so it's kinda surprising that it took me this long to cover it. But the story of the Missing Apprentices doesn't really start with some cut content. No, the story actually starts with a reoccurring theme this episode and that's very baffling design choices. When joining up at the college, you start a quest called First Lessons. This quest starts by greeting Feralda and ends after participating in Tolvdir's lecture. When the quest ends, it makes it so that various high-ranking mages will start holding lectures in the Hall of the Elements. One of these mages is Finnish Jester, the Conjuration Tutor. Despite the title though, his lectures don't actually revolve around conjuration. Instead, they're a more general summary of things related to the college's policy. And while the majority of the lectures aren't that relevant, these two lines are peculiar. Any information as to the whereabouts of the previous group of apprentices would be greatly appreciated. As of yet, there has been no sign of them. Why? Because they're related to our unused content, of course. The first of the two lines actually has a script snippet attached that was meant to start our unused quest. Although, as you could have guessed, this script doesn't actually function as intended. It actually can't start the quest since this code isn't in line with how quests are usually started in Skyrim. The quest itself doesn't really seem to note that it's unused either, since it's partially implemented. And weirdly enough, that's gonna be a theme in this episode as well. What's supposed to happen is that the quest The Missing Apprentices, internally known as Freeform Winterhold College B, would start up. Freeform Winterhold College A is another good quest, should you be wondering. But uh, about that starting point, it just seems like a bad idea to tie it into a line that would be missable and happen in a random scene. In a perfect world, the player would be listening to Finnis and then immediately get the quest and be able to ask him about it. In reality though, the player would probably run through the hall, passing by Finnis giving his lecture and suddenly get a random quest to pop up from out of nowhere. Not really ideal. The scripting of the missing apprentices is also really bare bones. We have a quest name, yes, but very little else. All three quest stages are empty, but they do show that stage 10 was to be set when the player collected info, stage 20 would be set when at least one item was collected, and stage 200 would end the quest. There are no remaining quest objectives, and Finnis is the only NPC marked as important. But there's something else important. All of the quest's dialogue seems to have survived, which makes it very easy to puzzle the pieces back together for a change. Now, I know that some of this dialogue can appear in a vanilla game due to how buggy this quest is, but just play along with me and act like all of this is unused, it makes my life a lot easier. After hearing that some apprentices were missing, you could ask Finnis about them, and he would say, Ah, that, yes. The group prior to yours has disappeared entirely. It's possible that there was less than the necessary amount of oversight that's still being looked into. But we've had no contact with them for quite some time now. Arniel wondered if perhaps they'd somehow managed to get themselves lost in the Outer Realms, but I think that's giving them too much credit. Then there would have been two questions you could have asked Finnis. Either where could they have gone? To which she would reply, I'm not sure. None of them were working on anything terribly dangerous. Or you could ask, how long have they been missing? To which you would say, I hadn't really considered it in terms of time. I suppose it's been at least a month. Either way, he would follow this up by explaining their experiments. Let me think. What were they working on? As I recall, Yisra was trying to improve flame cloak spells to better work in Skyrim's harsh environment. Elos Tai was practicing illusion spells. She was having trouble with the calm spells, I believe, but only ever worked with skeevers. And then there's Borvir and Rundi, twins, though they rarely agreed on anything. Those two boys were obsessed with mead, convinced they could concoct something to compete with hunting brew. Something about using frost magic to chill the mead for a certain period of time. I felt it was a waste, but the Archmage let them proceed. And it seems that after this, Finnis would be done explaining and you'd be free to go and look for them. This might be a bit jarring and you may think that there's dialogue missing, but I honestly don't think that's the case. As a side note, 
Since this is Skyrim, it's possible that the game would have given you map markers to each of the missing apprentices. Or this could have been one of those rare quests without one, like No Stone Unturned. However, due to the scripting being very unfinished, there's no way to know for sure. And now for the next part of the quest, finding the apprentices. You might assume that they don't exist in any form, but that isn't the case. Each apprentice exists, has a unique item to identify them by, and has a whole unique scene set up for them in the game world. Sadly, none of the missing people you find are still alive, but I do have a strange fascination with game NPCs you heard a lot of interesting info on, only to find them diseased. To progress in the quest, you would have to take their identifying item and return it to Finnis. But first, let's admire the work of the world builders, shall we? Going in the same order as Finnis, we can find Yisra's burnt corpse south of Ingvild. It seems that her improved flame cloak experiment got a bit out of hand, and she was incinerated as a result. Lying in front of her is a tome of flame cloak and a burnt book. On her body you can find her unique necklace. Ilastai can be found to the north of Isgamor's tomb, next to a small shrine to Talos. You can also find an open cage here with a dead skeever inside. Strewn around the corpse are some more dead skeevers, as well as two scrolls of calm and one scroll of fury. Clearly she didn't have as much luck with her calm spells as she thought she would. Her unique ring can be found on her body. Something that I also find notable is that Ilastai lacks any footwear. Normally this wouldn't be noteworthy, but she has a unique outfit assigned. This outfit simply consists of an enchanted pair of blue mage robes. You'll understand why I find this noteworthy in a moment. The next apprentice is Borvir, and he can be found inside of Journeyman's Nook, the only one of the apprentices to be found at a marked location. Sadly, he met the same fate as his compatriots. Although this time he didn't die due to his experiments. No, Borvir is found with three arrows in his back, and with an archer bandit in the same room as him, it's quite clear what did him in. Once this threat is dealt with, we can admire how well crafted this little hamlet is. Borvir apparently set up his own alchemy station and there's also a knapsack to be found next to a table which was presumably his meal table which doubled as a study table. The coolest detail though is his bedroll, a rug and a campfire with a pair of boots. Similar to Ilastai, Borvir wears a unique outfit, consisting of the same enchanted blue mage robes, although this time there's visual storytelling that he took off his boots to let them warm by the fire, which is a really nice touch. I don't know why they didn't do something similar for Ilastai though. Next to Borvir's body is his unique elven dagger. And then we move on to his twin brother Rundi. Rundi made it the least far out of the four of them, and can be found east-southeast from Winterhold on a circular stone plinth. Still, it seems that this didn't help Rundi as he died trying out his frost experiments. There's a unique effect applied to his corpse, making it appear frozen. And because his body is surrounded by frost runes, we can only assume that this also led to his downfall. There's not as much of a visual story to be told here, and Rundi's iron dagger is found amongst some offerings nearby. Rundi is also the only apprentice as of yet to not have a unique outfit, instead being equipped with the standard court wizard outfit. And with that, we have the items confirming all of the deaths of the missing apprentices, and it's time to head back to Finnis. Before we turn the items in though, there's one more thing I need to show. Once you've left Finnis, you could return and ask him if he's heard any news from the apprentices. If he had not yet found any items, he would say, None. It's been long enough that, honestly, I don't expect to hear from them. But if you had already returned an item, the question would slightly change and he would instead say, No. And after what you've discovered, I fear the worst for them. Getting back on track, Finnis has unique dialogue for every apprentice's item you returned. Yes, I recognize it. Well, I suppose I needn't wonder where he is anymore. It certainly is. Was, I suppose. He would never have willingly parted with it. What a shame. Oh dear. I had particularly high hopes for her. Once she had overcome her difficulties, she could have been quite successful here. Gods, this is hers, isn't it? She will certainly be missed. And when you return the last item, Finnis will add the following. Well, all of the previous apprentices have been accounted for thanks to you. Here, why don't you take this? It was intended to be given to the best in their group, as a reward for their hard work. It's the least I can do for your help in putting this matter to rest. Oh dear, I, I didn't mean to say it like that. That wasn't a joke, really. This dialogue sets the quest stage to 200, marking it as complete. And there's also a script snippet that doesn't do anything, but it was meant to handle giving out your quest reward. And that's where this part comes to an end. Time for our interlude. Did you know that I've been cheating this entire time? Of course, some people may not call years of research cheating, but still. Remember when I said that the game doesn't really know if this quest is removed or not? Well, if you were to read the official Prima game guide, 
then you'd also be confused as it basically does the same thing. The missing apprentices is listed as a possible miscellaneous objective under the name Lost Apprentices. Either that's an early name or just an incorrect one. This short description perfectly aligns with what I've previously told you, except now we know what the quest reward was supposed to be. Even if it's just leveled gold, it's nice that we know that much at least. I think it's kinda weird how this quest is placed here under the miscellaneous objectives without any further info. It's almost as if the developers didn't know what to do with it. It also appears, by name only, on the College of Winterhold location page. Funnily enough, it isn't even the only removed quest that's listed there. Although, for some reason, that other quest even has a full walkthrough describing it, despite not being in the game. All the apprentices get their own landmarks mentioned in the guide as well. Some of my descriptions are inspired by these, though I will not tell you to search Yisra's crispy corpse. Also notable is this picture of Rundi's mistake, where he isn't lying dead on the ground, but rather just A-posing. That's a thing, sure, why not? I was gonna make a joke about how only a Bethesda game could pull something like this, but when I was recording footage, the corpse did the exact same thing. And then he spawned without clothes on. And that's even when he spawned, because I had to create a whole new character just to find this corpse without any other bugs affecting it. Putting the guidebook aside, you know that this can be a video of mine if there wasn't good content inside of the good content. Going from least interesting to most interesting, we'll need to reevaluate our apprentices here. First is Elastai. Something you may have noticed is that both me and Finnis have referred to her as female, but the body we find is that of a male Argonian. Is that a mistake, or is it just something they hadn't managed to change in the dialogue yet? We'll probably never know. Yisra is far more interesting. We actually never encounter her in the form of an NPC. This burned body is actually just a container in game terms. However, there does exist an unused NPC form of Yisra. She wears the exact same outfit as Randy and carries her necklace in her inventory as well as an iron dagger, but that's not really noteworthy. What is noteworthy is the fact that her body uses the same unique frozen effect that Rundis does in the final game. So was Yisra originally meant to be found frozen to death? One thing is for sure, Rundi wasn't. And Borvir wasn't meant to be dead either. Yeah. Wanna see something jarring? These are the AI packages attached to their respective corpses. Yes, these two dead men have packages set up for a complete day, including breakfast, lunch, dinner, work, sleep and relaxation. Indeed, these corpses have better AI set up than the usual living NPC in Skyrim. But why is that? Well, as the name of these packages implies, Borvir and Rundi were once meant to inhabit a location known as Frost River Farm. So what's all that about? Well, Frost River Farm was meant to appear in Yalmarch, west of Miko's shack. In the final game, a dragon mount is placed in its stead. There's leftover location data for the farm's exterior, Frost River Farm location, as well as its interior, Frost River Farm interior location. Both were simply known as Frost River Farm. There are no keys or lock lists left over for this location. The twins would apparently have lived here, as well as worked here. It's kinda hard to tell when exactly they were altered to corpses to serve their role in the final game. For example, they both have fully unique faces, but they're both marked as level 1 NPCs. Borvir seems to be correctly marked as a farmer by class, but Rundi is marked as a blacksmith vendor. Borvir is also mistakenly marked to respawn, despite being a unique NPC. Rundi doesn't share this quirk. Borvir is a part of the Frost River Farm faction, yet Rundi isn't, and neither brother is part of any crime faction. Their inventory is also basically non-existent, since they're just used as set dressing in the final game. Also, something very odd for dead NPCs, but the twins actually have their relationship set up correctly. Based on the fact that they're marked as allies, they would probably also be on good terms with each other. Something I haven't mentioned up to this point is that the corpses are prefixed with POI, which is very normal for Skyrim, and just stands for Point of Interest. This prefix usually denotes unique unmarked encounters in the game world, yet this relationship marker just uses their names. Again, very hard to say when they were turned into corpses for a quest that wouldn't see the light of day either. Okay, so, Borvir and Rundi were meant to be alive, and they were meant to live at a place called Frost River Farm in Yalmarch. Anything else? Well, yes. The twins were also meant to be connected to a radiant quest called Supply Line, and while Borvir doesn't have any leftover lines, Rundi does. The quest would have started by the player asking him how the meadery would be working out, which implies that they recently started the meadery at the farm, I suppose. It's in line with his characterization by Finnis at least. It's tough, with just the two of us. There's hardly ever time to make the occasional delivery to the taverns of Skyrim. We could use a pair of hands and a strong back. There'd be a little coin in it for you. I suppose you could reject this quest at one point, but there's only dialogue for accepting it left over. That'd be great. There's a case of our soon-to-be-famous mead that needs to get to Winterhold. 
Get it there and you can keep the delivery fee. Once you arrived at the Frozen Heart in Winterhold, you would speak to the Gur, who would say, Ah, good. I've been waiting on that. Here's the gold for it. Thanks. And that's basically the whole quest. Afterwards, it seemed that the meat would take off, and Rundi could give you more work if you speak to him again. Indeed I do. There would be three possible inns to deliver to, either the one in Whiterun, Winterhold or Windhelm. I need you to take a case of mead to the frozen hearth in Winterhold. The delivery fee is yours to keep. Another case of mead needs to find its way to the bannered mare in Whiterun. The delivery fee is yours to keep. Candlehorth Hall is running low on our famous mead. Can you drop off this case? The gold is yours, as always. All the dialogue for them is identical, but it's usually recorded in the voice type of both the innkeeper and the backup innkeeper. In Winterhold this isn't the case, as only the Gur has the necessary dialogue and Haran doesn't. In Windhelm, both Elda and Nils have the necessary dialogue, and in Whiterun, both Hulda and Sadia have the dialogue. Why Sadia? Well, because the game not knowing what to do really is a team this episode. In a perfect world, only Isolde would get acknowledged as the person that's the backup innkeeper, as that makes sense. But some game data identifies Mikael, Sadia, and even Olfina Greymane in this role. And with that out of the way, I think it's time we finish up here. I could mention the traces of the farm being mentioned in the Civil War script, but it's nothing all too interesting. But, this whole affair leaves a bit of a sour aftertaste, doesn't it? I mean, we lost two NPCs, a location and a questline, only for the NPCs to get repurposed as corpses in a quest that also basically got cut. And not just that, a college quest. They already don't have that much content to begin with. And this is far from the only removed college quest, let me tell you. I think I would have been fine with the removal of Frost River Farm and such, but they really should have finished up the missing apprentices, as it's clear that they really wanted to put effort into it. Despite this, it seems said effort went to waste. Shameful. Still, I kinda get it though, because the cards weren't really stacked in their favor. Not only do you have a very obscure manner of even getting the quest, but you're sent to find four corpses, three of which can basically just despawn or glitch under the map at any time, locking you out of your reward forever. Still. I'm Anunji, and I would like you to put any topic suggestions, requests, thoughts or ideas into the comments below, and I'll see you next time.